あのスカイラインが新しくなりましたいつだって Everybody, uh, welcome to this week's uh, show with the GDR Heritage Centre. Uh, today we're back at Lookers, Nissan and Gateshead. We were here about six months ago, if you remember, with Andy's amazing Midnight Purple R34 GTR Skyline. Uh, this week we're going to present another very special project that we constructed for a local customer, a gentleman called Ian Smith, who's also a friend. Uh, of mine as well. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Ian Smith, the owner of this absolutely amazing replica race car. Boom, here we go. Uh, I'd like to introduce everybody to Ian Smith. Ian is the owner, uh, as I've just said, of this absolutely amazing uh, car that we built from just a few years ago. Um, this is actually a pre-COVID built vehicle. However, uh, Ian took delivery of it literally just as the whole of the world went into a lockdown so he's had very um, little um, time with the car. Uh, this year he's just managed to start getting out a few shows. Uh, he's won plenty of prizes which he'll tell you about and last weekend it was down at the Goodwood uh, Retro Festival where uh, the response was absolutely fabulous so this car is riding quite high on social media at the moment. Um, but enough of me talking, so I do plenty of it. I'm going to put us over to Weed, who's going to introduce himself and tell us a bit about his car, and then we'll just have a bit of a chinwag again. So, over to Wayne. Yeah. So, uh, my name's Ian Smith. I've known Dave for ooh, 25 plus years. Um, I got into the Skyline scene, 33 GTS, 33 GTR, 34 GTR. I met Dave when I had the 33, and then from there, the 34 went up in value that much. I decided it was a bad idea to keep driving it on track and uh, was lucky enough to sell it and make some money off it, which enabled me to get this. Uh, and this was my dream car, something I always wanted to build. Dave knew I wanted it. And as soon as I sold the 34, but as a luck would have it, he rang us up and said, I've got just the car for you. It's in Lithuania of all places. And we pulled it across about five years ago and started the build. And Dave and I basically worked on it together, mm -hmm. uh, deciding what we wanted to do. And I left pretty much everything to him other than the research into you know the graphics and the wheels and those things he literally sourced everything built everything and did the job from top to finish um covered in bird poo if i remember sitting yeah. in the back of a barn wasn't yeah. it I've got, um, got yeah. multiple pictures of when it arrived yeah. where i genuinely thought what the hell have i done um but then <laughs> once i saw him break it down and, and strip it back and i saw the holes i was even more frightened about what i'd done um but actually sort of over the space of the next couple of years as we started working on it yeah it sort of came came to fruition and now i'm absolutely ecstatic about it um don't know what to say because there's a couple of little things that need to be finished but but when you look at it today compared to what it was when it arrived and it's chalk and cheese it's unbelievable the difference and what i particularly like is you just don't see another one of these in the northern hemisphere um there's some plain normal ones which not decrying those they're lovely but this is the only replica of the Zama Museum car. Yeah, um, I mean, the detail in the car, I was fortunate enough to be able to visit Japan a few times and actually have a hands-on experience with the one and only uh, vehicle that Nissan have in the museum. So I think really I've had a bit of an inside line with, uh, with that one. Um, and... Uh, we we are actually followed on our social media by the Nismo Mori factory in Japan, um, who followed the build, and we actually received a message uh, from them, um, giving us congratulations 
on the detail of the construction, which to us was just absolutely mind boggling. Um, the car's based on a 73 race car, mm -hmm. um, only one ever created, and it was in the, uh, the, the time when the fuel crisis struck. Uh, and then it saw the demise of the, the GTR program. So this could be very similar to what's happening right here right now with the 35 program uh, now being deleted and there's no follow-up with the 36 at the moment. So we might be going through exactly the same thing. Um, Ian uh, is, as you can see, very OCD about the detail. So we worked very well together. The, the green shade that we painted the vehicle is as close to the original factory car as what anybody could hope to get. Um, the, the, the shell and the paint itself uh, was cast over by a gentleman called Bob Lashley, who was Nissan's global ambassador for sports and GTR program. And Bob actually came to visit us on a number of occasions. Uh, he came to Silverstone, Eaton, he did, if yeah. you remember, and he mm -hmm. looked at the color of the car and his words were, Pretty good was about the comment he made. Yeah. He didn't say much else, unfortunately. Yeah. Pretty good. It's close. <laughs> it's close, David. Well, um, and then Bob came back again um, to have a look at the car when it was finished and have a look at uh, one of my personal cars. Um, and he invited us or asked if we would do uh, Nismo and a towel design, who we visited a few weeks ago, um, the, the greatest of honours by lending them uh, two cars to take to the Geneva Motor Show. So Ehan's um, car is one of those cars that was going to the Geneva Motor Show. Um, and the actually, it, it got to the, got to the border, that, didn't it? What I find really ironic is this car was nicknamed the race car that never raced because after the 72 Tokyo Auto Show, the 73 season was cancelled at the oil crisis, as Dave mentioned before. And ironically, this is the car that never got to Geneva either because <laughs> it was March 20, it arrived at the Swiss border yeah. and then COVID hit and both were cars got sent back to the UK, sadly. So didn't quite get there, did it? No, no, it didn't. But um, uh, it's been to plenty of shows since um, and it's certainly on the radar for a couple of shows in Europe. Um, and we're in discussions with a towel design at the moment as well. Um, about doing some special showings, but you'll find out about that in some of our later programs that we're going to run through the year. So, um, Ian, I just want to say thank you very much for, well, literally for us working together yeah. to create such an iconic car. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'd really want to build one for my personal collection. But you However, can't. I can't. <laughs> That's what I've agreed with Ian. It's a one off, and I'm really envious because to me, this car. Uh, and we'll go around it and we'll show you some of the features on it. It's just, it, it's perfect. And um, I just want you just to enjoy it. Um, if uh, you, you've, you've got your eye on a particular car that you want to build or a project um, that you've got fancifully drifting through your mind, um, you know where to contact us. Well, I can put all of our social media details up in that corner, down in that corner. If you want to build you something which is as iconic as this, it can be based on 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, all the way up to a, a 2022 model. Um, I've got 30 plus years worth of experience of building cars and, a, and an absolute passion for it. So um, I'll, we'll walk around the car, show you some of the beautiful features that are in it, and then we'll follow up right at the very end. And Dave, I know a lot of people say this and I am a customer, but the experience is great. You get those two or three years of working with Dave and his team, building it exactly how you want it, not how someone else wants it. And that's what's great about working with him and his team. Bingo. There you go, there's your sales pitch. All right, thanks Ian. <laughs> a few inches later. Um, so how would you build a car when nobody knows what the car looks like? That was a bit of the problem that we were faced with. Um, our friends at Nissan at the Amori factory, uh, who maintain the original, whilst enjoying our build, gave us absolutely zero information about this car. It's their car, which they're very proud of, and had to respect that as well. So this car was really born from me visiting Japan, getting close and personal with it, taking a lot of photographs and trying to study it on the internet. So some stuff came easily, some stuff was really difficult. One of the, uh, one of the iconic parts of this is this big front end. So if you go and have a look at the new GTR 50, 
with its big front, you'll actually see where they got the design work from for the, for the GTR 50. Um, the engine bay, uh, it, it's always the passionate part of one of, one of these builds. Um, we started off with the original engine for this vehicle, totally stripped it down. Uh, our engine master, Mr. Wally, um, who everybody knows, uh, Ian Wally, the grumpy old man, um, he actually stripped this down. Uh, we then went and sourced the factory spec carburetors for it, which you can see down here. So it runs on open carburetors. Um, the exhaust system as well, we fabricated in house. And that's a side exit, which I'll show you shortly. Um, glorious sound, there's no silences in there. When this fires up, it belches flames out of it and uh, really, really cause. The suspension for the vehicle was not available. So we had to um, modify some stuff that we managed to find out there doing a bit of research. So we've got fully heightened down and adjustable um, uh, suspension. Even working on the stance of the car, I've always felt that the stance of a car can either make it or break it. So there was a lot of hours of just researching the, the photographs that we could find of the vehicle in Japan just to get the right height right. Um, the wheels, we had um, custom cast at Watanabe in Japan so these were made for this vehicle again information that we couldn't find was how wide are they how big are they what the offset is etc so a lot of this was just a lot of painstaking research with it um, I'll take you around to the interior area now as well uh, the inside of the race car so again uh, we've retained a lot of the original vehicle um, the seats when they came with this car were just chewed to death by rats um, Ian very much uh, like uh, myself wanted some period looking car um, seats um, so we used uh, a local um, upholsterer to create these seats which really kind of pick up the 1970s feel where it's got these cooling vents inside of them. We didn't go for leather, we went for vinyl because vinyl would have been the appropriate covering that they would have used in the 70s. Um, fortunately in my stash of many many things that I have hidden in my uh, collection we managed to dig out this old original 1970s race steering wheel as well uh, and then we replicated from the factory uh, pictures all of the lights that would have been used on this car when it was raced so the interior is very race car, it's very sparse we installed a rear hoop uh, and your roll bar to go with it as well which again is in keeping with the original so it looks absolutely beautiful and stunning but very purposeful as well um, onto the door cards as well we have these purposely made nice little feature we want to show off a little bit of the 1970s uh, ingenious Nissan build program so we actually left the uh, the workings of the door lock short externally so it just gives you a little bit of something extra to have a look at um, I'm going to take you around to these wheels that we discussed um, just a, a few moments ago and you're going to appreciate now just how big these wheels are. So step through to the back and I'll show you the big wheels first. Um, so these are the wheels that uh, our friends at Watanabe Japan kindly cast for us. Um, the size of this back wheel is actually ten and a half inches. Uh, a huge wheel, really soaked in, taken up by these wheel arches. Um, but you can appreciate just the size of it when I put my hand just inside that wheel there you'll see just how, how vast they actually are so again another little unique part of the build uh, and then finally on to that famous back end um, that everybody knows about the Nissan Skyline the twin circle rear Skyline emblem in the middle again devils in the detail when we looked back at the race car there wasn't any locks keeping this boot on these little rubber latches here so uh, we actually hand painted all of the silver all of the gold coach lines that you see going around the vehicle as well so little details that's where the devil's at um, but it just represents what we feel is one of our um, high level builds that we do from the heritage center here we go. So once again, thanks very much for joining and watching us. Uh, we appreciate everybody that uh, watches the videos. So I'm gonna do the usual, please like, subscribe, share, tell the world about us. We've got plenty more exciting things to uh, to show you. I'd like to thank Lookers Nissan uh, in Kate said for allowing us to come to the showroom today. It's been a wonderful experience. Plenty of customers coming around wanting to know what's going on with an old car in the showroom. And just wanna say thank you very much to Ian for coming along today as well.
to show us this beautiful car. So thank oh, you, Ian. You're welcome. Thanks very much. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. Bye.